Hello. Hello, everybody. How are you? Hello. All right. So you guys know in Patreon, I am doing an image building series because obviously I know a lot about image building, creating an image, creating a brand, because it's what I've done for the last 10 years on YouTube and also in my personal life and with various you know endeavors that I've had. So um, this is something that I have a lot of experience in. And I wanna talk today about who determines your value as a woman. So we're just waiting for a few people, whoever's gonna join us today to come in. Hello, everybody. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, so yeah, I wanna, I wanna, I want to talk about this because um, I, I, I think it's it's important to to discuss and to talk about because I think it's something that people don't think about enough, and I know that we all come to various points in life where um, we truly, truly you know, we want to, we want the best out of life and we want change and we want to evolve. And, you know, we, we want the best. Hi, hi everybody coming in. So, um, you know, this is, this is going to be, uh, uh, hopefully a short <laughs> insight, insightful, um, stream. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about, uh, about why I came up with this topic in relation to the series that I'm doing in Patreon, uh, is I was watching a video. I, I've been watching a lot of different commentary about, um, this situation with Meg the Stallion, um, very terrible situation. Uh, a lot of people have a lot of things to say about Meg, you know, I'm not here to talk about what really what she chooses to do or what she doesn't choose to do because hi, Mary. Hi, Sabrina. Hi, everybody coming in because everybody has their own set of values and morals um, and some people have none. Uh, so that's not really a conversation. You know, how you choose to live your life is determined on, you know, the goals and the outcomes that you want for your life. So you know, the broadcast is really not about that, but I am going to talk about some of the things that we can relate to. Obviously, we're not celebrities. I always tell you that we can't relate to celebrities uh, in any way, shape or form, but we can use them as sort of, I want to say, case studies. And <clears throat> I've been listening to a lot of commentary online from different YouTubers, different creators. I've also been reading different articles about this situation with um, Megan The Stallion, who is a very popular rapper. Uh, I think she's most known right now for her song, Savage, which is a, it's a catchy song. Um, it, it was a huge TikTok song. That's how I knew about it. I don't really listen to the radio. I don't know who's coming out. I don't really know about any new artists because I've kind of reduced, um, or I've, uh, since I've gotten older, I just don't stay current with uh, artists and things of that nature. But Savage is a, is a catchy song. Obviously the subject matter is not you know, productive, so to speak, but most things in hip hop are not productive. But that's not what we're here to talk about. You know, we're here to talk about this terrible, very tragic situation uh, with Meg The Stallion and uh, this Tory uh, Lanez guy. Now, the video that I watched that made me use this as an example for today's video is I was watching a video from O'Shea Duke Jackson, which I really love O'Shea Duke Jackson's channel. Obviously, I don't agree with everything he says. I don't agree with everything anybody says, but he's very entertaining and he makes some valid points on his channel. And he was doing a video, basically it was about um, how men don't protect women that they don't respect. 
And that really stuck out to me because I think this is very, very true. Um, thank you. I think this is very, very true. Um, and I'm going to be clear. I, I put this on Twitter the other day. You know, if you want to follow me on Twitter, I'm TN Fashionista. Uh, I said on Twitter the other day, basically, that the idea that women have been taught on social media that random men are supposed to protect you is flawed. It's a flawed ideology because husbands protect their wives and their children, okay? That's who's responsible for protecting you. That would be your spouse. Before that, it would be your father, your brother, your, you know, your cousins, the men in your grandfather, the men in your life. Also, obviously, if a man can protect any, any woman without harm coming to himself, um, my husband would do that. He would protect any woman, no matter what her race was. If she was black or white or Asian, it wouldn't matter what race a woman is. My husband would protect any woman, but he would not risk his life for any woman but me because that's reserved for me as his wife. <laughs> okay. That's not for random men. Random men are not supposed to risk their life for strangers. Okay. If they can help, if we can help anybody, and that goes for men and women, if we can help anybody who's in trouble by calling 911, not recording on our video, on our camera phones, if we can help anyone who's in destitute, who's being abused, um, we should do that. Okay. Just being a, a decent human being, that's what we should do. But here's the problem that I have with Meg the Stallion. Anytime, and this, this, not personally, I don't have a problem with her personally, but anytime you project an image that is, I'm hardcore, I don't need men, I only use men for sex, I'm masculine, I'm strong, I'm aggressive, you know, um, people are not going to be very quick to be sympathetic towards you. So for the people who don't really understand why people aren't sympathetic towards Meg, um, this is why they're not sympathetic. We're not gonna talk about if it's right or if it's wrong. It's just the reason why people are not sympathetic uh, to what happened to her. I am sympathetic to what happened to her because I obviously I'm a woman um, and I can only imagine what it must be like to be attacked by someone that you supposedly are are dating. So I, I am sympathetic to Meg, you know, um, I'm sympathetic. She's a young girl. She's not that, she's 25. So she does need to understand a few things about life at this point because she's at a crucial point in her age and in, 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 in the woman she's becoming. So this led me to the question of who determines your worth? Because if people don't value you in the way that you want to be valued, uh, it's going to reflect in situations like this, where she is with a guy who supposedly she is dating. She has not elaborated on the story. And I know she was on Instagram live. I didn't, I don't follow Meg the Stallion, but I know she, I've seen in the news that she was on Instagram live and she was kind of, um, you know, giving a sob story about her situation or whatever, but I don't see any accountability from her. Meaning Tori Lanez, I don't know, I, I think that's his name. He looks like a thug to me, okay? And it looks like everyone that Meg has dated is uh, very thuggy, okay? Uh, so you, you can't, you know, uh, play these type of games and think a man is going to adore you and protect you if what they project to the world is I'm a thug, I, I'm a womanizer, I'm a, you know, <laughs> I'm a street person, I'm hood, you know. If that's what you project uh, and a woman is attracted to that, then I don't see how then these same women think these men are going to treat them as Lanes, okay, thank you. It's pronounced Lanes, okay, Tory Lanes. Thank you so much for that correction. I don't see how women think these type of men are going to protect them. Um, it's very confusing to me for you to choose someone of this nature. Now I get she's a rapper, he's a rapper. So I guess they're trying to do the Jay-Z, Beyonce power couple thing. I, I don't know. But if you want the world to be sympathetic to you, 
to view you as a feminine woman, to view you as a damsel in distress when things happen to you, well, then you're, you're going to have to carry yourself like that. And people may say, well, that's not fair. You know, it's not, well, life's not fair. Okay. Once you realize that you, you're going to be better, you're going to do better for yourself. Once you realize that, yeah, it's not fair and life's not fair. <laughs> that's, that's the breaks. Um, so first I want to say for believers, my believers that follow me, a lot of you are believers, you know, like me, that's why you follow me because, um, because I'm a believer and you're a believer. For my believers, we know that our worth is found in in God. We know that right off the back. We know we're nothing without God. We know we are nothing. We are dust. Literally, we're made from dirt, okay? And we will return to the dirt when we die. Uh, so for believers, we know all of our gifts, skills, um, any good that comes to us through our hard work, uh, is really just a blessing from God. We we know that. We know we're nothing uh, without God. So this is not a spiritual video though. So I don't really need comments about that because I'm not taking a spiritual angle with this video. This is really um, coming from how people of the world are going to interact with you based on how you carry yourself. It's not a spiritual video. So I'm not going to be touching on spiritual aspects, but I did want to start by saying that who determines your worth? Well, it should be God, but we also have to live in the world. We have to work. We have to earn money. Uh, we have to uh, date. Uh, you know, we have to uh, present ourselves and our skills and our talents. And we, and we have to uh, be able to navigate in, in a world of, of people that have all different beliefs, all different perspectives. Uh, you know, people, people are different. Everybody's not the same. Okay. So I do want to say that we know believers that our worth is in Jesus Christ P point period blank. Okay. And that is why we're happy. We're content. We're in peace. And um, that's that's that. But this is not a spiritual video. OK, now let's let's talk about the subject at hand. So O'Shea basically said, you know, men are only going to protect who they value. You know, they're, if, if 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 men value you and they see you as uh, somebody that's worth fighting for or defending, uh, then they're going to protect you and be empathetic towards you and feel sympathetic towards you. Now, I'm not saying if I agree or disagree, but I do agree with the perspective of there are certain things you need to consider when you are revamping uh, your image. And there are certain things you need to consider with how people look at you and with how people judge you and with how you uh, determine your value as a woman. So I'm gonna quickly go through the ways that we determine our value as we go through this image building series um, in Patreon. And so the first thing I wanna talk about with who measures or how you measure your self-worth is basically uh, with who you surround yourself around, all right? So there are, a few different ways that people uh, would determine your value. And one of those ways is who you associate with, okay? Um, when you associate with people that look like criminals, people are going to assume that, that that's your lifestyle and you're going to be guilty by association. And so a lot of you may need to change your circle. And, and who you surround yourself around. And I think that's one thing that Meg has learned from this situation, from being shot by this man, is that uh, you want to date thugs and thugs are going to act like thugs towards you, okay? So people will base your value on who you, who you hang around, you know? And also that, makes you feel better about yourself. When you're around people that are goal-driven, that are making good decisions in their life, none of us are perfect. We all make mistakes, you know, yada, yada, yada. But some people only, you know, feel worthy when they're around certain people. That's bad. And some people hang around the wrong people altogether. I mean, these are people that are probably not going to progress you. They may not have the right image 
that you're you're trying to project to the world. And so you do have to understand that people will base your worth and your value on who you surround yourself around. And I think that's the situation with Meg the Stallion. I think people see how she conducts herself online. I think they listen to what she raps about. You know, she's an independent, rich, hardcore woman. Um, you know, uh, and I think they see, they have seen, like, I think she's been arrested before, before domestic violence. I mean, so like you're violent yourself, <laughs> you know? So how are you gonna be violent yourself? And then you want people to treat you like a victim. You know, I, I mean, it, it doesn't make sense. You know, we, we have to use logical thinking for this. And this is not a judgment of her. Like I said, we're just using her as a case study. You know, you can't be violent yourself and then tell men, protect me but I'm going to fight you and slap you and cuss you out and jump in your face. That doesn't make sense, ladies. And so if, if you're somebody that wants to play the damsel in distress, well, you're going to have to carry yourself as though, you know, you're, you're innocent. I, I, I treat everybody well. I'm not aggressive. I'm not jumping in your face. I'm not cussing you out. I'm not trying to fight you. And then people will, interact with you in that way as though you are, you know, you're the innocent one. But Meg does not present herself like that. And so that is why a lot of people were making jokes, which were disgusting. I don't think you should make jokes about anyone who's who's getting shot. I mean, what what kind of person are you? You are just a degenerate. I mean, who laughs about somebody getting shot? It's not funny. It's it's very weird the way people act online. It's very, very weird, but people are weird. A lot of people are weird or, or jealous or hateful. You know, it could be a lot of reasons why people were laughing at her. But the reason people weren't treating her as though she's a victim is because she has a questionable history of violence herself. Uh, so I, I think we have to keep that in mind when we are trying to change our image and revamp our image. You know, who are we surrounding ourselves around? What negative associations have we developed in our life where we may have to separate? All right. So the second thing that I want to talk about um, in relation to uh, how people determine your wealth is obviously what you do. OK, uh, are you passionate about your life? Are you passionate about your job? Are you are you making a difference in the world? And, it, and you don't have to be some important, famous person to make a, a difference in the world. OK, you, you you don't have to do that, but you should be a passionate w a woman, a high value woman. We are passionate about what we do. Uh, we care about what we do. We go for our goals and um, it's reflected in our attitude and what we talk about. And so if you're not passionate about what you're doing in life, uh, don't blame racism. Don't blame, don't say it's because I'm a woman. Don't say it's because I'm poor. I, I don't wanna hear that crap. Don't say any of that it, because we all have barriers that we have to overcome to, to live the life that we want to live. And so you need to look at yourself and your situation and see yourself where you want to be, okay? And it's important to be realistic uh, because you do have to be realistic. You have to look at how old you are, how much time you have to revamp yourself and look at all the lanes that you can go down to revamp yourself and change how you feel about yourself. And when you feel good about yourself, it's inevitable that people will treat you well, okay? Uh, thank you, Jackie. It's 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 inevitable that not everybody, I mean, you know, people are going to treat you how they treat you. But overall, when you carry yourself in a way where you like you love your job, uh, you you have goals, you have purpose, uh, people are going to interact with you differently. And I recommended a book for the last live stream. It's not on YouTube anymore. If you wanna see the last live stream, you have to join my Patreon. You have to invest in yourself. It's inexpensive. Uh, I give lots of great information on Patreon. There's a whole plethora of videos for you to watch. So if you want that video, you have to, you know, you have to invest like the couple of dollars that it, you know, it costs like a Starbucks coffee, two coffees for, for per month. It's like pennies. Um, 
I recommend the book and I, I will link the book in, in, in the description box. Uh, it's called uh, Psycho Cybernetics. And basically uh, this is a plastic surgeon, plastic surgeon who realized that even after people had plastic surgery, they still didn't feel good about themselves, okay? Their facial feature was different or, or whatever was fixed, but they still didn't feel good about themselves. And it was because in their subconscious, they see themselves one way um, and that stuck with them. And so basically this doctor says, it's a very famous self-help book, uh, very famous. And it, it's, it's a wonderful book. I, I'm reading it right now. Um, basically what the doctor says is you have to start visualizing yourself where you want to be in life. And you have to believe that you can reach that goal and get to that point. And you have to feel the emotions. It's almost like when we're a kid. When we're a kid, we have so much imagination. Nothing holds us back. We're so imaginative. And when we become an adult and life hits us, then we stop using our imagination. We stop believing that we can reach our goals. And so if you know you hate your job, if you hate your life, don't blame the government. Don't blame racism. Don't say it's because I'm black. Don't blame your parents. Don't blame anybody. Take a look at yourself and your situation and say to yourself, what can I do to live the lifestyle that I want? And this has nothing to do with it being a certain type of lifestyle or a certain amount of money, which leads me to the next um, way that you 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 determine worth for yourself and the way other people look at you is your net worth. You know, and I'm not talking about becoming rich. Most people will never become rich. That's just the reality. And you don't need to be rich to live a good life. You need to have a portfolio. You know, that's one thing I learned too late in life. I always had a career. I always had, you know, I always lived well, but I did not always manage money well. And one thing I learned too late, if I, all my 20 year olds watching me, get your money right when you're young, get your money straight when you are young start investing, start saving, pay off those credit cards, watch your credit score, because that is going to give you confidence in yourself when you're able to walk into a store and not look at all the prices. You know, uh, you're able to sit down at a restaurant and not buy the chicken because that's the cheapest thing on the menu. What kind of life is that? You know, what kind of life is that where you got to look at a price every time you go into a store? All right. And I'm not even talking about like luxury stores. Obviously, we look at the price when we go into a luxury store because we're spending a lot of money. But I'm talking about just regular stores. If you're in Zara or H&M, why should you have to look at the price every time you want to buy a throw or for your couch or a pillow, a decoration, or you just want a nice meal at a nice restaurant? Why should you have to go through the menu and order the chicken? Because it's the cheapest thing on the menu, you know? So, your net worth is going to help you with how you see yourself because you're going to say, okay, I'm paying off my bills. I have a good credit score. You might be in debt, student loan debt, because most of us are in student loan debt that went to college and that took out loans. So we might have some debt that will be there a while until we pay that off, but we have to learn how to budget money and you have to build a portfolio. Uh, a financial portfolio where you're investing, um, you know, and I wish I could share things with y'all that I'm doing, but I can't because people are just so hateful online. So I could only share like part of my life, but I wish I could share certain things that I'm working on right now, me and, me and my husband individually and some as a couple that I really think is changing my life. Um, but maybe one day when everything's completed, I'll come and share and talk about that. But if you don't have money, uh, and I'm not talking about being rich, if you just don't have any type of savings, your credit's not right, you, you live in paycheck to paycheck, you're not going to feel confident, okay? Because living paycheck to paycheck doesn't make you feel confident. It makes you feel bad. So that's something, another area you might be wanting to revamp um, that we'll talk more about. Um, what's another way? I had I had a couple points. I'm almost done here. I'm about to wrap it up. Um, also how you look. Okay, so this is a huge one. Okay, you guys know I always talk about image. 
fashion. That's what this, that's the core of what this channel was about. It was about fashion. Um, I, I still have a passion for fashion, but I'm more simplistic. I like some more simplistic fashion. Um, I don't believe I need to be loud with my fashions. I feel I'm a good looking woman. I have a great shape. I have the components that I need to get the type of attention that I want. Um, but obviously fat loss is a goal for me right now. I'm just trying to, you know, get, get down with my fat. My, my fat percentage is too high. And so, you know, I'm working on that bit by bit. It's the hardest thing in the world for me because it's my weakness. It's 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 one of my weaknesses, uh, you know, uh, making sure that I'm eating right and I'm, you know, burning fat. It's it's very difficult. But how you look is a huge uh, determiner in how people treat you and also with how you feel about yourself especially when you're trying to reinvent yourself and you're trying to build confidence and, and build your image. And being overweight is never going to do that. I have said this and I will continue to say it no matter who's mad about it. They only get mad because they know it's the truth. When you're overweight, that does not put you at um, optimum confidence, okay? Because then you're always trying to hide you know, your tummy or your flabby arms, or you know, you're just uncomfortable in your body when you're overweight. Being overweight is a very uncomfortable feeling. Even if you have a desirable shape, and you, um, you know, you get you get the attention you want, but it's just uncomfortable to be overweight. It's a very uncomfortable feeling. And so, I think when when you decide to focus on that it's gonna give you confidence because what it's gonna do is gonna help you look better in your clothes and you don't have to worry about hiding your muffin top or your flabby arms or, you know, wearing certain things. And I know there are a lot of big girls, you know, I was, let me say this, I was scrolling through YouTube. I don't really watch fashion haul from fat women anymore. I really don't. Be the reason I don't is because I can't relate. Even though I'm a big woman, I'm a plus size woman. I still wear plus. I can wear regular, like I could wear extra large or a large on my top. But for the bottom, sometimes if it's a skirt, I could wear extra large or a large if I'm like uh, in some places. But I'm still pretty much plus uh, when it comes to pants and stuff. And so the other day I was scrolling through YouTube. I was like, I haven't watched plus size hauls in a long time. So I was scrolling through the hauls and I was just disgusted. I was really just disgusted on how big women are dressing now. I'm talking about cellulite everywhere, fat rolls, too tight, too little, too short. High value women don't carry themselves like this, especially if you're overweight. Why are you accentuating your terrible looking body? I don't understand it. I know this sounds offensive to some people. I'm sorry, you just have to unsubscribe. Just unsubscribe from me because I'm not I'm not going to sit here and live in this delusional world like I literally could only find. I couldn't find one decent, maybe one or two. I found one or two girls that I felt were kind of decent. Um, it was disgusting. It was disgusting what big women were wearing. And I don't know if big women are doing this to fit in. I don't know if they're trying to convince the world like, you know, we look good. No one thinks that. No one thinks that. But the people in your community that lie to each other. No, no one thinks this. And so I, 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 it was really disturbing. I couldn't find one channel where the women were really classy, where they were doing more of a, a more sophisticated type of style. I couldn't find it. And I was pretty sad. And now I realize why I stopped watching plus size fashion hauls because I don't relate. I can't relate. I don't dress like that. I don't accentuate my flaws. I only play up my 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 best assets. I always play up my best assets. And that is how you're able to have the confidence in yourself to go out in the world and reach your goals when you're playing up your best assets and when you're looking your best. And so that's why I stopped watching fashion hauls on YouTube because I mean, everybody just looks disgusting to me. Like I, it was only like two or three people and I was like, oh, okay, I like their style, you know, let me see, whatever. So how you look is always going to be a way where people determine, you know, your worth. And if you're in a too tight, too little outfit, what, what message do you think that's sending people? Do you think you're attracting high value people to you? in ill-fitting clothing 
you know so this is these these are things you want to think about when you're trying to uh revamp your, your image um also your achievements you know what are you achieving in life what things have you achieved I think I'm going to end on this one because the video has gone too long. But the last part is, what have you achieved? You know, people are going to look at your achievements and they're going to make a, a, a judgment on how valuable you are and what you have to offer the world. Taking it back to Meg The Stallion, you know, she's achieved a lot in the hip hop uh, arena. Obviously, like I said, she's a celebrity. We can't relate. But think about her image. <laughs> I'm sorry to tell Meg, but she can't have it both ways. If you present yourself as like this, I'm sexually free, uh, over the top, ratchet, uh, independent, foul mouthed female, well then why are you looking for men to protect you? That's an oxymoron. It doesn't make sense. And that's why I don't think people are connecting with, you know, the whole I'm a victim thing because people see your behavior. They see the way you carry yourself. They see what you rap about and they look at you and think, oh, you're strong. You're strong. You're a strong woman. You know, you don't need anybody to come rescue you. You're, you're, you're strong. You're a strong woman. Look what you've achieved. You're rich. You do whatever you want. You say whatever you want. Why do you need men to protect you? especially men that you chose to date. So I think Meg the Stallion could be a learning lesson for us all uh, in the sense of what you project to the world, who you hang around, who you network with, how you look, how you carry yourself. That's how people are going to treat you. That's what determines your worth to the world. On a spiritual sense, we know what our worth is. No one can determine that for us. Your job, how good you, I don't care if you look like uh, the most beautiful woman in the world. I don't care if you're filthy rich. Um, in the spiritual sense, only God determines our worth. But like I said, this isn't a spiritual video. This is about how do we navigate through the world and get the treatment that we feel we want or that we desire okay not what we deserve so to speak i hear women speak you know women deserve this you don't deserve anything okay you can desire it all only thing you deserve is to be treated well like a human being but you don't deserve preferential treatment you don't deserve uh to be doted on and spoiled and you know, uh, you don't deserve anything. You desire it. All right. And so I think that is what I, this is what I hope Meg the Stallion takes from her experience. I hope she takes, I doubt it. I think she's going to be right back to being ratchet, singing about her private parts, being filthy and masculine and hardcore. Uh, Cause that's how she makes her money. You know, so I, I, I don't see her changing, but what I would like to see from her is a maybe more softer feminine side, especially because she's a black woman and people tend to think black women are hardcore. They tend to think, you know, we can handle anything. Um, they don't think that we want special treatment, that we don't deserve to be treated well, that we don't, that we, you know, a lot of times people, based on what they see on, I don't know, Love and Hip Hop and from rappers and from how sometimes black women are portrayed in the media, we don't always have the best representation. Uh, so I think it would be good if influential black women would stop being so liberal and lean more to, we are feminine women, we do want to be treated well, we do carry ourselves with respect. We do dress in a way that flatters our shapes and our bodies. Uh, we do speak well. I'm not saying like you never say anything bad. Like I tell you guys, my husband was always on my case about 
you know, uh, I can have a potty mouth sometimes, you know, just because I'm a spiritual person, it doesn't mean I'm not a flawed person. You know, I'm still a flawed person. And even I have a potty mouth sometimes. My husband is like, no, Kim, that's not a good look for you. <laughs> like you, you don't need to be speaking that way. But I have people that hold me accountable. And I think that's why I started Patreon, because I know a lot of you, you may not have that older auntie or that mom or that sister that holds you accountable for your behavior and for how you um, carry yourself and also to help you reach your goals, because that's ultimately why I have this channel at this point. This channel is about lifestyle, my lifestyle. I have some lifestyle videos coming up, sharing some things about myself. I have some um, living abroad content coming up. Um, but ultimately this channel is to help you evolve, evolve into the woman that we all want to be. And obviously, like I said, I've been able to create a brand. I've been able to work with brands. So I understand image building very well. Um, it's something that I, like I said, that I've done for 10 years. So I understand how people think, whether it's right or it's wrong. I understand how people think and how people judge us and how people determine our value. So we should be contributing to the world in a positive way. We should be carrying ourselves as feminine women. It doesn't mean like we wear dresses all the time or you wear flowers or any of that dumb stuff that people teach about femininity. Femininity really is your essence as a woman. Um, and it's it's your passion, it's your purpose, it's your creativity, it's the way you express yourself. It's, um, you know, all of the things and all of the gifts and skills that God has given us to give back to the world. And so ultimately, that's what this channel is about. It's about how can we look great? How can we live the life that we want to live and achieve all the things that we want to achieve? So I pray for Meg the Stallion. I pray that she heals well that she's able to recuperate <laughs> and that she learns from this and matures. Now she's only 25 and Lord knows I didn't know anything when I was 25. I thought I knew stuff, but I didn't know anything at 25. I was still figuring it out. I'm still figuring it out. But there are a couple of life experiences that I've had that have kind of helped me along the way. And so I hope she will not date men that don't appear to uh, be masculine you know, masculine men do not beat women. You know, that's not their thing. They don't shoot women and beat women. But also as women, we don't hit men and we don't jump in men's face and we don't curse men out because that's those are not feminine qualities. And when you act like um, a, a dude, uh, people are going to treat you like a dude. And so I think that's the problem with Meg, Meg the Stallion, why people were making fun of her and why people were being mean, because they don't see her as a feminine woman that deserves to be protected. Now, is that right? No, it's not right. It's wrong. But she chose to be with that guy. So she does have to be accountable for who she chooses to be around. All right. So that's all I wanted to say. Make sure you join Patreon. I have some new content coming out probably tomorrow or the next day. There's a new video up in there already that asks is the ask the question, uh, what is your self image? And that video is going to help you explore what image you already have so that you can move forward. If you want to read more about how to create mental images in your mind and um, how to kind of reach your goals. I will leave a link to the book that I was telling you about that I'm currently reading. Um, my dad bought the book too. I told my dad about it and he bought the book. So yeah, that's all I have for you today, ladies. Uh, take care. Oh, somebody asked a question. Please, can you do a video regarding femininity? Some of these videos on YouTube are a little misleading. Yes, they are misleading. Um, a lot of the femininity videos on YouTube are very superficial. Um, not in the sense of beauty is not important because obviously hair, skin, makeup, clothing is very important. It's, very, it's a very important part of your image. But the missing component of femininity on YouTube I notice is nobody talks about feminine character because femininity starts inside and then it exudes on the outside. 
it's it's very misleading what what a lot of ladies well and a lot of young ladies are teaching about femininity they don't really understand it either because they're 23 24 25 you you really don't understand some things about life until you mature yourself a little bit so a lot of the girls that are teaching about femininity i some of them are teaching prostitution uh for the sake of being prostitutes they call them whether you want to call them escorts or prostitutes or sugar babying some of them are in that lane okay then some of the channels are just teaching you like put lipstick on plop a wig on wear a weave wear a flower dress talk soft that y'all that's not the essence of femininity obviously you don't want to be talking hardcore like a man but you can be a direct woman and be considered very feminine my husband thinks i'm feminine you know i'm but i'm not i'm not docile i'm not like a you know a, oh like doing a fake voice like if i need to have a soft voice for the for the situation obviously i have a soft voice for the situation but that's not femininity that is a, a false that's that's looking feminine okay you can look feminine you can put on your makeup you can put on your dress you could do all of that and you can look feminine but when you start speaking and when you start trying to build relationships and when you start um talking people will know you're not feminine because it, it will come out and the the truth is we're conditioned to be a little more masculine i mean everybody has masculine and feminine energies you need both but I feel like some of the things on television, the music we listen to, the people we may be hanging around, it will bring out those hyper-masculine qualities or oh, being over ambitious, being super competitive with other women, um, being jealous, being envious. All those are masculine, those are masculine traits, okay? And so those are things that we pick up along the way from college, from you know, all of the things that we experience in life, what it means to be a woman has changed. We've evolved so much that I think as women, we've, we've evolved over the edge, okay? We've evolved way over the edge of what it used to be or what it used to mean to be a woman. Feminine fancy and the modern lady are good Christian channels, but yeah, a lot of them teach trickery, which can get a woman in trouble. Yeah, feminine fancy. She's I follow her on Instagram on my wifey for lifey group page. She's a beautiful girl. Gives yeah, she has nice videos. And I don't know, I don't know if I follow the modern lady. I might have to look her up. All right, so there's more to femininity than just wearing dresses and talking soft and you know having pretty things around you it's also about your values and your character um and you know and, and, and other other things like like dealing with uh your past uh processing emotion vulnerability um oh yeah dr michelle i love michelle michelle is a a, a great girl um, I haven't watched a ton of her femininity videos just because I don't watch, I don't watch those type of videos on YouTube anymore. Like I don't watch a lot of like my, like the people who talk about the things that I talk about, I don't really watch a lot of those channels. I watch a lot of men's channels because I like to hear the perspective of men and then have that conversation with my husband. I don't watch a lot of femininity channels just because I don't need that information um, for the most part, but I do know Dr. Michelle. Um, I, I've talked to her on Instagram and she's a great woman. Um, so I do like her. Emotional maturity, which would have helped me again. Yes, emotional. Um, yeah, she's very good because she's a, um, yeah, that's her, that's her career path. You know, she's a, what is she? I know she finished her PhD. She's a, I don't know if she's a counselor or a therapist. That, that's what she went to school for. So she's very knowledgeable about that. And she's very, she creates great videos about that. Um, yes, we'll, we'll end with this. Emotional maturity is what Megan needs. But we, we will give Meg grace because um, Meg is 25. So some things I had to learn through my 20s and some things Meg will have to learn for herself as she develops and matures but because of the world that she's in i don't see it happening because 
in that industry, you have to do what it takes to be successful. And people want to hear filth and they want to see you acting like that on the internet and they want to see you twerking on the internet and they want to see you, you know, and women want to be sexually free. You know, there's this whole sexual freedom, you know, do whatever, trying to be like dudes, you know, dudes can do it. So let's do it too. It's going to make us feel great. And, you know, so there's this whole sexual liberation that's going on in that genre as well. Um, so I don't see her changing to be quite honest with you, uh, because I'm sure she's going to do whatever it takes to get that check. So, I mean, but I hope that she won't put herself in the situation that she put herself in with this guy because he, he doesn't look like a nice guy. I mean, even when I look to at his Instagram, he doesn't look like a nice guy. He doesn't look like, like somebody that, but women don't want nice guys. I'm going to end on that. A lot of women, they say they want good men, but I don't think a lot of women actually do want good men. They want swag. Okay. They want, they want, uh, you know, the guy that has an edge until that guy knocks you out. Then you don't, then you don't want them to have an edge. So, you know, a lot of women want a guy that's kind of violent. Um, that's kind of exciting in some way, especially when you're young and you're misguided. You know, so I hope she changes. I hope she learns from this lesson. I wish her the best. Nobody should be making fun of her. It's not a funny situation. Um, I didn't. I don't find it funny at all. Uh, and so I do wish her the best, though. All right. But those are the life lessons I think we can take from this whole conversation of what determines your worth and why maybe a lot of men feel like she's not worth protecting. Maybe even if that's right or even if that's wrong. Okay. So yeah, join us on Patreon. We will have more of these conversations um, and all of my content that's private and exclusive. You can find it on Patreon and I will see you ladies later. Bye. Thank you, Grace. I'm so glad that you enjoy my channel. <laughs>